Welcome, everybody. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about with Todd um, about uh, the tools you need to hopefully get some perspective of sale accounts that, uh, you know, just takes a little bit more than uh, contacting them and asking for one. Uh, so we're going to go over about all the reasons that you might want to uh, do wholesale. You know, if you don't make a lot of money or you know things like that, then uh, you know wholesale is good for you. Um, I like ridiculously high margins, so um, you know I don't do a lot of wholesale. I mean, I have plenty of wholesale accounts, but. Uh, you know, with retail and liquidation, I find I can make, uh, you know, at least 100%. Uh, if you're doing liquidation or if you're going to do wholesale, then, you know, you might make 20, maybe 30% if you're lucky. Uh, but it, it's definitely a lot less work. Uh, you can send the stuff, uh, you know, sometimes directly to Amazon or have it sent to a prep center and, and let them do all the work for you. Uh, you can use um, things like Scubana or Restock Pro, and it'll tell you exactly when to buy it and what to buy. So a lot of time to put into your Amazon business, and uh, it might be a good option for you. Or, you know, if you have more money than you know what to do with, then you, know, you can invest that um, money back into Amazon uh, and only make, you know, 10 to 30% returns. Uh, but do that over and over, and you could do it with just a few hours a month of work. Um, so I think Todd has a little presentation. Um, and, uh, you know, then we'll answer uh, any questions you have along the way. All right. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, as Sean mentioned, uh, wholesaling is the, uh, the land of low margins. Um, so, um, you know, it's definitely something to look at going into. I kind of think of wholesale as you know, a progression from retail and online, online arbitrage if you get to the point where you feel you can't scale that. Um, you know, a lot of people are able to scale with additional staff or uh, are just really good at a retail arbitrage or, you know, have already left their job so they can dedicate more time to it. So um, wholesale is a good option if you're limited on time and you can uh, make do with the lower margins. Occasionally get a home run, but for the most part, it's, it's low margins. Um, so I do have a presentation. I hate presentations, but I created one just because there's a lot of links in this and also for, um, for follow-up notes. So um, I would still advise you to take notes because we're going to cover a lot of information, um, but um, it's also captured on uh, this slideshow if, um, if you can refer back to it. Let me go ahead and switch to slideshow mode and... Let me reshare my screen. I think I shared the wrong one out here. Um, there we go. Okay, hopefully everybody can see that slide um, as soon as I move my task manager. Um, basically, it's wholesaling. This will take you soup to nuts from don't have a wholesale account now to getting your first, first wholesale account. Uh, and I've also got a little bit of a, a bonus for you at the end to kind of get you started. Um, so if this is something you're serious about, um, there's really no reason you couldn't have a wholesale account and be ordering uh, within the next three to four days. So we'll go ahead and jump back, in, back into it. I've got the chat up. So if you have, have a question, just go ahead and post it. And if I don't get to it right away, that's because I'm either working it in in a future slide or... Um, hey, guys. Uh, I know you've been waiting a while. Okay, so first of all, let's step on. Let's start on the, the happy stuff, uh, the pros of wholesaling. Uh, one of the first number one pros is you touch the product less. Uh, there's no price stickers just to scratch off. There's no marks. You don't have to worry about damages or missing pieces or counting parts or anything. It's all brand new, virgin, if you will, um, products. Um, it's more easily scaled, and again, that's subjective. If you have manpower or you're good at, you know. Um, scaling up with uh, new with additional employees, then that's scalable. But wholesaling, really, all you have to do is scale is just order more uh, because you have a lot less um, touch on the product. Um, for me personally, this may not be true for everybody, but I have to really bust my butt to spend a thousand bucks in one day doing retail arbitrage. It's a full day. Uh, I could easily within an hour spend a million dollars on wholesale because it's literally you're just ordering, you know, as much as you want to order. Um, shows up at your door in volume, so you don't have to go to multiple sites. Uh, just a series of boxes. 
And it's typically one listing with a high quantity versus a bunch of listings with a smaller quantity. So I still do a little retail, arbit retail arbitrage, but I'm fairly lazy sometimes. And I hate, you know, even though the list is already there, I hate going up and adding your product for two or three items. Um, you know, I'd much rather create something that I can replenish. So um, as we've said several times before, whatever fits your business model and your personality, there's no right or wrong. I mean, um, as Sean mentioned, he does zero wholesaling and he smokes me in terms of revenue and profit margin. So I, obviously there's no right answer. Um, either way, or his is the right answer, depending on how you look at it, but um, just pick what you like doing, basically. Um, wholesale is also considered a B2B or business-to-business -business transaction. And what that means is when you buy from a, like a Walmart or a Target, if, if you get to the specifics of um, the way that the courts have interpreted whether or not that's still a new product, it's kind of sketchy. Some people say that once it hits a retail market and it's sold, it's no longer new. Um, some people say that that's not true. So, um, uh, basically as you, when, when you buy from a wholesaler, it's still considered a new product, even when you take delivery of it. So that means that all warranties are preserved in a full effect. Uh, it's technically considered new. It's a business business transaction. So if you ever have any claims of, uh, unauthorized product or used product or anything, uh, I've only had one of those and within, you know, an hour of sending in my wholesale receipt, the case is closed because it's a, you know, if it's a licensed distributor and they can prove that, which distributors will produce a letter for you, then there's no argument. I mean, it's direct from the manufacturer to their authorized distributor. So uh, those are some of the pros. Some of the cons, uh, which Sean mentioned already, um, if you read Amazon's annual report for last year, their own profit margin on their own products was around 5%. Uh, Walmart, Target, most of those, they hover in the three to six, you know, maybe 7% profit margin because they do it on volume. Um, so uh, most wholesale margins for wholesale products I pick up are in the five to 20% range. Uh, there is one exception to that, and that is uh, one of the things I've done over the past year is learn the uh, closeout or clearance or uh, whatever you call it, cycles at the wholesalers. Um, each vertical, and sometimes each wholesaler has their own sales cycle so for instance uh, in the summer uh, if you purchase like board games and collectibles that type of thing uh, trading card games in the summer around july is when they have a blowout um, one of the wholesalers that we're going to mention at the end uh, they have a sale every month uh, with a different provider and then they have clearance throughout the year so that's where i hit most of my home runs uh, to be honest uh, you know wholesaling especially on pre-orders it's kind of a gamble so i'd say probably you know, 40% of the products I break even or lose money on. And then the other 50 or 60% of products I make money on. Uh, and then of those 50 to 60%, there's probably 10 to 15% that I make really good margins on. And so overall it equals 10 to 20% margin. So um, just because you're buying wholesale, it's not always the same price. Uh, there's all kinds of factors. Um, one of the cons is you win big, you fail big. Um, when I go to Vegas, I stick to the quarter slots. <laughs> You know, because worst case, I'm out, you know, 25 cents times nine lines or whatever I'm playing. If you go to the dollar slots or the $10 slots, and obviously you're out $9 and $90. It's the same with wholesale. You cannot walk in and buy one uh, unless it's a expensive product. You have to buy, you know, six, eight, 24, um, 36, whatever. And you have to have a minimum purchase. So typically you have to spend, I've seen some as low as $100 on the reorder, but most of them are 300 the thousand dollars on the initial order um, so you know a lot more risk a lot less profit margins so again this is something to think about moving into um, possible logistics issues this is something I've ran into and I run into constantly uh, I just had to uh, rent additional um, storage space just this past week um, you need to figure out how many products you can successfully store in your current setup uh, how many you can list uh, in a reasonable time frame, how many you can process, which means polybag or whatever you're doing, and how many you can receive. Uh, and by receive, I mean or if you get a freight truck rolling up with a lift gate and a pallet jack, is that going to upset your neighbors or your homeowners association or that type of thing? Because uh, if you get pallet delivery and you live in a house, you go pay extra, and it's going to be a noisy process with a lift gate. So that's something to look at. There's some alternatives. There's some ways to get around that, but just some of the things to think about. Um, wholesale, in my opinion, is kind of like private label. It's kind of like a, a holy grail that people strive for, but it's not always the right thing for your business. So we just want to make sure you have all the details before you make the decision. 
here's some of the things that you will need uh, before you ever set up a wholesale account. First is an employer identification number. Uh, some of them you could probably get by with your social security number, but that's only the small ones because if you give a social security number, first of all, an EIN is formatted differently. So it doesn't look like a social security number. So a wholesaler is going to know that you're just Joe Schmo in his garage with a social security number. So a lot of them won't take it uh, because most of the wholesalers aren't allowed to sell directly to consumers. So it kind of puts them on shaky ground with their manufacturer if they're taking social security numbers. Um, getting an EIN is free. You do have to get a new one each time you change your business type or business name. So get that locked down first. Uh, but then the presentation, I've got the link that takes you straight to the IRS website. Um, one thing to mention in this presentation, everything I'm covering, if you Google search for it, the top few links will be for a company that will do this for you for a fee. Everything from EIN to finding wholesalers. Um, do not pay money for any of this stuff. All of it is very straightforward, very easy, and they go out of the way to make uh, make it easy and accessible for you. So if you see any kind of link that says, you know, here's the price or, you know, not affiliated, don't do it. I would just stick the links in this uh, in this PowerPoint. And if these change, we'll keep this updated. Um, and it's going to be posted in the group afterwards. Um, so an EIN is an employer identification number. It's social security number for businesses, basically. Uh, that's what uh, purchases are reported to, earnings are reported to, and that's how the IRS knows what you made. Um, second, you need to register, co register to collect sales tax in your home state. Uh, most wholesalers, and I'm only saying most because I don't know all the wholesalers, so there may be exceptions, but all the wholesalers I've dealt with will not set up an account without a sales tax certificate because, again, if you're a business, you're collecting sales tax. If you're not, they shouldn't be selling to you. So this is just all part of what you need to do. Um, again, it's free in Florida. Uh, some states charge money for it, but I would recommend just doing it in your home state initially. Uh, and I provide the link for Florida because that's where we're based is Florida. Um, third, you need to register, <coughs> excuse me, as either an LLC, an LLP, a corporation, sole proprietorship, DBA, something, just so that you're not trying to do business as an individual. And there's a host of reasons for that, but um, they just something you need to take care of so you have a business name uh, when you set up your account. Again, I provided a link. Uh, I believe Florida charges, it's under hundred and it's under $200. I think it's between 130 and 150, um, depending on how you file. A DBA is cheaper, I believe. But again, that's something that you really ne need to have in place if you're selling Amazon with any kind of volume anyway. Um, so those are the must-haves. Uh, the things you may need in the future, and when I say may need, I mean please don't go out and get these unless you know you have a need for them or unless you really want them. Um, business cards, those are always handy to have, especially when you go to conferences and trade shows. Um, you can get by with the Vista print ones, but you know there's kind of an image, um, kind of takes away from your image when they flip it over and it says get your free card from Vista print. I mean it works, but I mean, I got my business cards, I think I got 50 uh, with a color background uh, and nothing on the back, you know, other than what I wanted for uh, 30 bucks or less. So they're not expensive. No, I'm sorry, not 50, 250. So they're not expensive at all. And 250 will last me a year uh, based on the conferences I go to. Um, a business bank account. Um, and I put some that needs to be established because uh, just to mention that sometimes wholesalers want like a bank reference letter or bank history. So this is something that's typically low cost. Um, if you're in the Florida, Tampa area, I highly recommend Grow Financial Credit Union. Their business bank accounts are free, completely free. Um, you pay 10 bucks a month if you do a QuickBooks format download. Other than that, there's no charge. And they also have business lines of credit that the last one I pulled was, I think, 1.6%. So um, very good value. Um, takes, you know, 20 minutes to set up the account. Uh, and it's it's flagged as a business account. And most of the wholesaler forms, when you fill out the account, uh, they have a place to check personal or business. Uh, it just presents a more professional image of a business bank account. And then it's separate from your personal funds. And, you know, I don't want to lecture on accounting, but it's just a good idea in general. Um, you may need a post office box. Uh, and some of them will receive packages for you, some of the post offices here in, in, um, in Florida. I say you may need a post office box because some wholesalers won't deliver to a residential address or they kind of are resistant to doing so. Um, so, you know, you, some of the wholesalers at the end that we cover, uh, and that's our, our little bonus is we're going to hand you some 
some verified wholesale accounts that I personally bought from and can vouch for. Uh, some of them will ship to your house no problem. Some of them won't be able to ship to your house or will charge you an exorbitant fee to do so. Um, the post office box will receive FedEx UPS packages. They won't receive a, pa a pallet, but everything else they will receive um, some of your post offices. Um, Another option for that is a storage unit. Uh, around in, in our area in Florida, they have Extra Space Storage is the name of the company. They will actually receive your uh, pallets, whatever you get for you. Uh, you give them a copy of your key, you sign an uh, indemnity form, and they will let the driver in, hand them the key, and they can drop the pallet or pallets or whatever. Um, so that's, that's one way you can work around some of the homeowner's restrictions and delivery restrictions. Um, I pay... For a 10 by 20, uh, like five minutes from my house, which is, you know, a, a nice residential area, I think I pay around 160 a month. So not exorbitant, but, you know, it's worth it for me because with a 10 by 20, I can fit, fit probably uh, probably nine pallets. I don't think I have that many in there at any one time, but that's about what I could fit, which is a pretty hefty order. Um, a business phone number, I went back and forth on this, but it's it's paid off for me enough times that I maintain it. Uh, and basically with the business phone number, I use grasshopper.com. Uh, it's 12 bucks a month and then you pay for actual usage. But with a business phone number through grasshopper, it looks and sounds just like a regular business. So they have a standard greeting or you can go on Fiverr and have somebody record one, but it says, you know, thank you for calling Joe Schmo seller, you know, for sales, press one for deliveries, press two. And then it forwards it to your cell phone or your home phone. Uh, and the caller ID will say that specific number. So if you're using your home phone for your business phone, you know how to answer it, you know, professionally when that happens. And you can set business hours and everything else. So that's something I would grow into. You know, if you're starting to go to conferences and wanting to deal with, you know, higher tier wholesalers, that's something you can look at. But 12 bucks a month was the best value I could find for a, you know, a, a reputable phone number company. Um, a web page, some wholesalers never ask about a web page or they'll ask about it and never check it. Uh, some of them require it. Um, so it's always something that's good to set up and we'll show you at the end how to set one up that will pass muster for the majority of wholesalers for less than five bucks a month. So uh, it's not a big deal. Um, some of them you may need a brick and mortar and or e-commerce site. There's not a lot of these, but you're going to run to either certain wholesalers or certain brands within the wholesale that require brick and mortar. Uh, case in point, I do a lot of the board games uh, and Magic, which is a, a trading card game, Magic the Gathering. They will absolutely not sell to anyone that doesn't have a brick and mortar. And they verify that by checking utility bills and address and Google Maps and everything. Additionally, if a distributor gets caught knowingly selling to someone without a brick and mortar, they'll, they could lose their status as a reseller, which magic gathering is a huge cash cow they basically print money so there's not a wholesaler in the world that will take that chance for you so um, you will run into things like that you will also run into a few um, companies that want a an established e-commerce site and when they say an established e-commerce site it cannot be amazon and ebay because what they're looking for is someone who's selling in different channels other than amazon or ebay uh, because they want somebody who already has their own audience essentially um, those are few and far between, and if you stick with the distributors, which is mostly what we steer you towards, uh, you won't really run into that. Um, and just for clarification, the difference between a wholesaler and a distributor, my definition anyway, and, and, and it's, there's different definitions, but um, I call a wholesaler as someone who sells direct to businesses specific product lines for, you know, a manufacturer or two, you know, not that many. A distributor is someone who carries multiple brands using a particular vertical. So I have... One of the wholesalers we're going to show you uh, at the end sells basically every toy, board game, and action figure you can imagine from probably close to 150 brands. So they're a distributor because they're not really aligned with any particular manufacturer. They'll just sell multiple brands. Those, they typically don't require an e-commerce site because they're not really building their brand. They're just moving product. Um, next slide. Whoops. Did I skip one? No. Okay. Next slide is, sorry about that, um, drinking from a fire hose. Um, basically, um, you will be overwhelmed when you first get your first wholesale account with the sheer number of products. Um, it's, it's really, I mean, some of the largest ones have as many products as the average size Walmart store or more. It just seems more overwhelming because rather than walking in a store with aisles and departments, you just basically get a screen full of products. 
and they're broken down by categories and brands, but it's very overwhelming because it's, it, at least for me, it's harder to go through it on the web page than when you're actually standing in the store. So before you take on your first wholesale account, um, one of the things just to make sure of is that you have the time to dedicate to go through their items because um, it's no harm in getting set up and not ordering, but it, I think it helps build a relationship with your sales rep if you're ready to order within a couple of weeks of placing the account because they get a lot of the tire kickers. And, you know, they're there to make money, so they're more interested in helping people that they think are going to be purchasing. So um, you could probably get set up and purchase now uh, and be ready for Q4, but I personally wouldn't even mess with this after November 15th or so because you're just going to be so swamped in Q4 that it's just going to, it's just going to be one more pressure. So uh, I would push this off until it slows down after the first of the year. Um, second is, do you have a method to evaluate a large number of items? This is optional. You don't have to have it, but it's been a huge benefit for me. I mean, I've signed up with some wholesalers that had 17,000 items. I run them through a utility like Ecom Spy. And I find out there's, you know, really only 30 items that meet my criteria. Because basically with, with these tools, you get a list of UPC codes and costs from the manufacturer, distributor, or wholesaler. You upload it, and then, you know, minutes or hours later, you get an email saying, hey, your, your, uh, your job is complete. You download the spreadsheet, and then you can just set filters saying, okay, show me everything where Amazon's not a seller. With the lowest or, or at the buy box price, buy box price, I can make at least five dollars, and there's less than forty sellers or whatever your criteria is, and then it will just show you a targeted list to start with. Um, that's a huge time saver. Um, one other thing to to be think about also is if you're skilled in a particular vertical and you can take advantage of pre-orders. Um, what I mean by that is I'm uh, I'm not good at selling toys. I'm horrible at trying to anticipate what's going to be hot, what's going to not be, you know, I just have no knack at it. I barely broke even when I thought it was going to be a Toys R Us, you know, mogul one year. So I just learned my lesson with that. So I'm very cautious with toy pre-orders uh, because it's easy to get burnt. But if you're, you know, an avid Marvel Universe follower or you know everything about uh, Asmodee, board games, something like that, you'll have a definite advantage on pre-orders because all of these um, – distributors are selling from the same channels that Amazon themselves buy from. And I've had several instances where I was able to jump on their pre-order, get my product conceivably the same time as Amazon got theirs, get it in Amazon listed and sold before Amazon's went online. So if you know, you know, if you're knowledgeable in a certain area, then that is something you definitely want to look at because you can apply that knowledge and, and get ahead in there. Um, I had a question in the chat group. Do I have a brick and mortar site? And a lot of companies are wanting that rejected most of the time because of that. Uh, I do not have a brick and mortar site, but I will tell you one way I work around that. And it's, uh, it's not lying. It's a uh, creative marketing and, but it requires a little extra work on yourself. Um, every community I've ever been to or heard of has some type of seasonal or annual or some type of charitable open air market where they'll say, you know, Hey, Christmas in July or um, Christmas shopping or fall festival or something where you can rent a vendor table and sell your goods. It's worth it to do that for 50 or $75 because when they ask you if you have a brick and mortar site or where you sell, you can say, I sell online at major um, e-commerce sites and also have seasonal open air festival and um, craft fair presence or something along that lines, basically saying that, you know, you're selling in fairs and markets and that type of thing, which is true. You are, you're only doing it once a year, but that's enough to satisfy a lot of these companies because what they're looking for there is they don't want just another, you know, uh, John Doe selling on Amazon or selling on eBay because, um, it's pretty much a proven fact that the more sellers they have selling their product on Amazon or eBay, the lower the price is going to go, just the nature of the business. So there's no benefit to them having, you know, number 31 Amazon seller when they already have 30. So they're looking for some angle that you have that will move their product in a different way and increase your sales. Because unless you substantially improve the listing or have some angle, adding the 31st Amazon seller will do nothing to their sales because they're still selling the same volume of traffic through Amazon. You're just splitting it across 31 people. So that's one tip, you know, look for, even if it's your church, just something I do it just so I can honestly say that I do that and not to lie about it, but just find some other 
venue, or even if you sell the flea market, you know, just find some other venue and say that you sell it open air, seasonal and community selling venues. Uh, and most of the time that's, that's good enough for them. Except like I mentioned, some of the brands like Magic the Gathering and that type of thing, they, they will require stringent brick and mortar proof. Um, back to the slide, uh, wholesalers and distributors are controlled uh, by the manufacturer, which basically means they don't work for you, they work for the brands they carry because they can lose those brands if they, if they screw up. So make sure you have a method in place to track and enforce MAP, minimum advertised price. Um, most of the major name brands have a map policy, which says you you cannot advertise their product for less than X price. It's either percentage off of retail, a percentage over wholesale, or specific price. Um, I've got caught a couple times when I was sloppy with my repricer or uh, in between repricers, where I was below map. And most of the large sellers or large manufacturers have dedicated people that troll the online websites, your personal one, Amazon, eBay, look for people violating map. And all it takes is one call from one of their major uh, retailers to rat you out and they will yank you in a heartbeat. I've had two product lines that they held my PO because I violated map. Um, I will also tell you that map is not universally enforced. They may tell you, you can't, they may have a product that says the map is $25. Amazon can list it at 19 or uh, Joe Megaseller can list it on um, Home Shopping Network for 12 and there's nothing you can do about it. That's their right to set whatever they want to and they just you have to play by their rules until you're buying enough truckloads to do what you want to with them. So make sure you have a repricer uh, or the minimum. Make sure you go on Amazon and set your minimum and maximum price alert so that you never ever under any circumstance go below map. Um, both times I went on the map, it was unintentional because um, I, one of the repurchasers I was working with would uh, back out the shipping price if you were doing the FBA. So if I went there and priced it and shipping was three ninety nine, they'd say, "Oh, okay. Well, since you're FBA, that means twenty five minus three ninety nine, which would drop my price." So um, I, I just I, if I have something with a map, uh, I either go in and just manually set the price, or I just check it periodically just make sure you're not under. Um, some items may be restricted, and this is where you need to ask the wholesaler or distributor so that you're not allowed to sell it on Amazon. Hi. Yes, sir. Have you ever gotten caught um, going under map pricing? Yep, twice. And both times they held my PO, and I had to – it's like an Amazon suspension, really. I had to tell, explain to them what happened, what I was doing to prevent it, how it was never going to happen again, and just apologize repeatedly to get back in there. Um, and both times it was at the worst time because it was a high selling season. So it was, it was a tough lesson to learn. Um, and one of them, as a matter of fact, not only was Amazon below map, QVC was at below map and Groupon was running a deal below map. And I replied back and said, you know, with all due respect, all these people are selling below map, blah, blah, blah. And their reply was those sellers pay a lot of money for the privilege of selling below map. So basically go pound sand, you know. I probably spend in one year what they spend in a week. So uh, map is just something that you have to adhere to to sell their product. Uh, the map is your it. map, by the way, right? Like you said, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. You know, yep. uh, it's a contract that you sell. So, I mean, that's another thing, you uh, you know, even if you're not doing wholesale, I, I mean, I get a ton of these. I've got, I don't know, 2,500 SKUs live on Amazon right now. So you know, obviously there's a lot more stuff going on, but I get, um, you know, probably a couple times a week, you know, usually it's just other sellers, you know, trying to scare you, uh, yep. you never know. So um, I do get these things saying that, you know, you're selling under map and even if, you know, it is the actual uh, distributor or manufacturer, uh, it's a map it is an agreement, it's a contract. So if you never sign a contract, then you don't have any map pricing that you have to keep under. Um, you know, so that's something to keep in mind. Map yep. pricing is a contract. So if you didn't sign a contract, then you don't have any map pricing uh, with that company. Um, you know, but if they contact you, it's a good way to, uh, you know, get an account with them uh, because you'll, you know, say, well, I, I never signed a contract with you, but. Um, you know, send me your information and I'd be happy to uh, open up an account and adhere to your pricing. Um, 
you know, so that's um, another end. And I mean, we've talked to companies, you know, usually I don't buy at wholesale because they're too expensive, but um, you know, it's an option if that's uh, the kind of thing you're looking for. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree with Sean, even if it's from another seller, I go out and see if they have a map uh, or if I'm not following it and I still make sure it's, it's trued up because, you know, I, you never know for sure. And they will change it on the whim. You know, you may not even know that the map changed. It's just something that you just have to stay uh, up to date on. Um, I even go so far as whenever I pick up like a liquidation load, whatever, if I have a product that's a name brand that I haven't dealt with before, I will email them and ask if they have a map policy. And a lot of times they say, we don't accept any more resellers, buzz off. And then I just say that email. And so that basically I tried and they wouldn't talk to me. Or sometimes they'll say, yep, here's our map price. And I still try to hear that even if I do a liquidation load because it just keeps you off the radar, you know, and you, you know, there's a big argument on there as to whether or not they can get you restricted on Amazon or what, but I've dealt with several products that they called in and restricted either the quantity you could sell or restricted people on the brand. So I just, I try not to poke the sleeping bear, um, if at all possible. Um, uh, some items may be restricted, so make sure you ask to, if it's okay, okay to sell on Amazon, eBay, in the U.S., that type of thing. I say in the U.S. because a lot of people don't think about this, but if you have the international sales uh, enabled in FBA where Amazon will ship your order overseas, that's something you have to be conscious of. Some of it's banned from export for legal reasons, some reasons for business, but again, that's not something you want to get caught doing. Um, and I, we have a little sample um, letter to send the wholesaler towards the end that kind of touches on finding what the restrictions are. So it's kind of a good way to ask without saying, hey, I sell on Amazon, you know, is that okay? Uh, because you kind of want to approach it delicately. Um, and again, some items may be restricted for export. Okay, setting up a website. Um, there are, there's a basic model and there's what I call an intermediate model. Um, I use the intermediate model. Um, I've worked with other sellers that use the basic model and I've never heard um, any complaints or any issues. Um, I think with a higher end brand, and when I say higher end brand, I mean like if you're looking at um, like Ralph Lauren clothing or, um, uh, you know, high end stuff. Um, I'm drawing a blank here, but, you know, if it's not like um, – basic brands at Walmart or some of the lower end stuff, a lot of higher end brands kind of have higher standards. So they may turn their nose up at some of the stuff or wholesalers. So um, I would say start out with the basic. And then if you have any rejections, start having issues, you can always say, well, we're in the process of redoing our website. So let me send a new link when we're done. And then, you know, one day you can have the intermediate version. Um, but the basic version, which we will, we will actually walk through here at the end of the slideshow is I use a product called Weebly. Uh, and I'll show you my actual website. I've used it for a little bit over two years. I've never, ever, ever gotten rejected uh, for my website. have had no issues. As a matter of fact, I've got several compliments from wholesalers for my website. And it's you'll probably giggle when you see it because it's just a one or two page, very simple, couple images. That's it. There's, it's not fancy, not flashy, no videos, anything. But it looks professional. Uh, and it doesn't have like cheesy flashing colors or anything that looks like it came out of the 80s. So that's most of these um, wholesalers and distributors, all they're doing is checking to make sure you have a website because I think, you know, a lot of the wholesalers are old school and 10 years ago, you know, if to have a website, you had to have, had to know what you do, know what you were doing. So you had to have a certain level of sophistication. So they thought that was kind of a, a pedigree to show it's your real business. Nowadays, as I'm going to show you in less than 20 minutes, you can crank one out. So I think it's just a carryover. But with a basic website with Weebly, uh, with a text description, and that's where you kind of want to don't copy exactly your description from Amazon, but you want to kind of say, you know, we've been selling since or, um, we're privately held company or we specialize in this, just kind of, you know, brag about yourself almost like a bio. Um, you want to have your logo up there. And again, Fiverr can crank out some basic logos. You'll have to spend a lot of money on that. And then the contact form. Hey, if you'd like to work with our company or if you have a product you think we may like, click here. That's all it has to be that simple. Intermediate, uh, and it's intermediate only from a technical standpoint, a little bit more expensive. Um, oh, back on the basic, the Weebly uh, website is around $4 a month or less. So you're talking $48 a year for a website, and that includes the hosting. Intermediate is where you register your own domain name with either GoDaddy or Namespace. Uh, and in the basic example, your, your website address would be joeschmo.weebly.com. 
which for the non-technical person, that's fine. They won't even notice. The technical person, they may say, well, hey, wait a minute. You know, they're just using a, a you know, shared uh, domain. If you register your own domain, it will be joeschmo.com. There will be no Wheatley. So it will look like, you know, you're a little bit higher end. Uh, and another intermediate is you can use high resolution photos. Um, I will caution, and it's up to you. Um, you know, the odds of getting caught are slim, but coming from an IT background, this is something I've always done. I would caution you on just Google searching an image and copying and uploading it because there's a lot of people that police their images out there. A lot of, uh, there are very few professional free photographs. So I would either go out and take your own or just Google for royalty free photos or photos site. You know, there's a, there's a ton of them and go find an image and pay the, you know, five to $10 to get a image that you can use royalty free. Uh, they'll come with a use agreement, what you're permitted to use it on, and you have to pay for it, but then you're all set. Uh, you're covered, and you can legally use it. Um, logos, from what I've been told from uh, distributors and wholesalers, is if you're carrying that product line, you're allowed to use that logo as long as you don't represent yourself as a you know, licensed retailer or a licensed distributor, something that you're not. So, but if you're reselling it, you can list that you know, as a logo that you carry. And again, don't sweat this piece too much. We'll step through this at the end. Uh, finding um, those. Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, That's okay. Yeah. Um, when you're creating your uh, own website, what I would suggest is if you use Weebly or another one, um, you know, I would always say make your own domain name. I mean, it's like $5 a year or something. You know, I've got five or six for my different businesses. Um, but don't. I, I'm not sure if Weebly like lets you like register a domain name through them. Yep. You know, but some of them make it hard to leave there. So um, I would always go to GoDaddy, something like that, and uh, create your own domain name. And then it's very easy just to have it forwarded to whatever site you want. So if you've never done it, um, you know, it's it, it's simple to um, just set up forwarding and. You could have it at your name dot Weebly, uh, but whenever they go to your website, like SeanMayo.com, it's forwarded to um, you know to somewhere else actually, or it's forwarded to my blog. So um, you know we set it up at one place, and they're just the domain registration, and it's free to forward. So all you're paying is that yearly fee, um, and I think GoDaddy seven ninety nine a year, um, and then you still have a Weebly um, website. But when they go there, they're going to your name or your company name. Uh, and some of those companies that are, you know, doing those generic templates like uh, like Weebly does, um, you know, they make it kind of hard if you register through them to change that to somewhere else. So it's always better to do it on your own and then forward it there. Yep, exactly. Yep. Uh, and every hosting or domain registration company I've ever worked with had great help pages, and they always have phone support. So if you have, don't have a clue how to do it, you can call them and tell them what you're trying to do, and they'll walk you through it. So that's a good point. Uh, finding wholesalers, I've heard um, Sean harp on this several times with liquidation, that it's just it's not a complicated science. You basically just have to Google search. You just have to look for them, basically. Uh, same with wholesalers. Uh, if you run across a product, uh, you know, one of the f one of the best products I've ever carried, and, it, and I mentioned this before, it's they won't accept any more resellers, and it's hazmat, so I'm not worried about disclosing it. But Poopery was one of my, is still one of my best products. And someone sent me a YouTube video. It was, uh, they make funny videos, and sure this lady on the toilet, and, you know, there was a whole ad campaign. And I saw it, saw the social buzz it was getting, and I thought, huh, I wonder if this is a product. So I looked it up on Amazon, and it was selling very well. So I just Google searched Poopery Space Plus Distributor, and first page, it had the distributor listed. It got set up with the account, and I had it in my hands in less than a week. So and we see a product on Amazon, if it's a number one bestseller or number 1,000, don't be afraid to just go take the product brand name. That's what I would start with. Uh, so Norelco, Gillette, Ronsonol, you know, whatever, Bostage, and just Google for that, and plus wholesaler, plus distributor. You'll have to weed through a lot of people that are gaming the search engines that just look for anything plus wholesaler. So if you see things that say, you know, we are your Bostage wholesaler, click here, and it's a name like wholesale directory or, you know, wholesale made easy, and that's not it. So you need to look for something that looks legit. It'll either be a weird name or it'll have the company name. You know, you'll have to dig a little, but 
basically it can be found that way. Uh, that's one way. Another way is to contact the manufacturer, and by contact, I mean go through the webpage. So go to Gillette.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, and look for uh, distributor, where to buy, contact us, anything. If there's nothing listed for distributor reseller, click the contact us button and say, you know, I'm a um, selective uh, retailer based in the U.S. Um, do you have any authorized U.S. distributors? Something along that lines. And they will always, I've never not gotten response. They'll either say, um, no, it's restricted to whatever, or, you know, yeah, here's the ones for your area, or they'll send me a web page. And so you just work backwards from there. Um, it's not that difficult and it can be done from the comfort of your chair most of the time. Um, nothing replaces a good old phone call, but you can get pretty close to it just by Google searching or bang or whatever. Uh, just search for it. Uh, trade shows or conferences are great for finding wholesalers with the one caveat that you're there looking for wholesaler just like everybody else there. So you're going to have more competition. Uh, probably not as many diamonds in the rough, but that's a great place to start. Uh, I know in the Florida area, there's a gift show that's free. It's twice a year. Uh, it's mainly like what I call tchotchke. It's like, uh, you know, crafty things and decoration and not, not something I really do a lot in. But you never know when you're going to find the rabbit trail. So I've been there before, found, got a list of wholesalers, went to check out their site, looked at the other shows they went to, and then springboard to a better show and looked at their directory. You know, so you, sometimes you find stuff um, that leads you to something else. Uh, same with looking for a distributor for a product. I found a list of their distributors. So then I click on all the distributors they list and see what they carry, and then I'll find other product lines that are different from the first one I was looking for. Um, so it's kind of a lot of sleuthing on the internet, but it's, uh, it's kind of fun to do. And, you know, you, you can, I've never found a product where I couldn't find a distributor, locate the distributor for it. Um, again, I mentioned this before, but do not pay for access to wholesale directory. Um, I don't know if, if you agree with that, Sean, or if you find any good ones, but all the ones no, I've seen. Are good ones. Yeah, they will happily take what 500 bucks and just basically give you stuff you can find with Google. So, yeah, uh, they're just selling you a list. Yeah. You're making a list, they sell it to you. Don't do that. So, we, on that, yeah, um, what I tell everybody to do is we look for the product first, find a good product that you want to sell, and just contact the, the manufacturer, like, like Todd just said. Um, that's almost what we always do. We, yeah. we find the product, we, um, we contact the distributor or we contact the manufacturer and we tell them what state we're in and uh, we'd like to know what, um, you know, what distribution channels they have. Uh, if they either manufacture or they, they sell direct or, um, you know, if they have a distributor. If they have a distributor, you get that information and you can buy everything that they sell. Um, you know, so it's very simple. There's not, uh, people make it out to be, you know, a lot more than it is, you know, they sell big courses on, you know, buying on wholesale, but I, I mean, this is really all there is to it. Find a good product, contact whoever is making it, it's right on the product, you know, and tell them you want to buy from them and they're going to sell to you. That's, they're in the business of selling stuff. So, um, yep. you know, they want, you know, they pay a lot of money to get in front of people who are, um, you know, who want to buy. So if you're contacting them, you know, that's their top priority is, you know, to get you in the hands of whoever can sell those products to you. Yep. And here's one thing to remember. There is no secret list of wholesalers because if you think about it, like Sean said, their business is selling product. The last thing they want to do is to hide away somewhere and not let anybody find them. I mean, their whole, their mission is to be found so that more people can buy from them. So uh, if we saved you from paying 500 bucks for a wholesale directory, then just consider that an early Christmas present because it is definitely not needed or warranted. Um, Thomasnet.com has a list of uh, wholesalers, retailerforum.com. Um, there's a paid service called Inventory Source that will actually feed products. It's for drop shippers. It will feed products to Amazon, eBay, and your website. That's another good site because they list all the wholesalers that they work with. Now, again, a lot of those are what I call the truck stop resellers. So they have like the e-cigarettes and um, lighters and tank tops with the skulls on them. You know, there's not a lot of really high-end products, but there are some. You know, I found a couple of wholesalers that... I initially worked with and then moved on to something larger from there. So um, always be digging uh, for a wholesaler because you never know where you're going to find them. Because the wholesalers, they're great at pallet jacks, forklifts, loading docks. They're not always great at marketing and search engines. So a lot of times they want to be found, 
but they're not easily found. So you just got to dig for them. And the reason they're not easily found is because there's so many people manipulating the, the pay-per-click system and, um, you know, just Google's ranking uh, with keywords and, and searching and, you know, search engine op optimization. So it's not that they're, um, you know, they're in the business of selling to you, you know, and there's a lot of other people that are a bit in the business of marketing to you. So the marketers are, are good at getting high in, in the search rank and the actual manufacturers aren't. So, you know, it's not that they're hiding, it's the other people are, are better at, uh, you know, getting the information to you first. Yep, good point. Um, next, we just have a real short, sweet sample email or phone call. Um, I will say that the larger the distributor, the easier it is to get an account typically because they're just there to move product. They do high volume. The more challenging ones, at least in my experience, are the, the new ones. So Shark Tank's a great, it used to be, it's kind of, everybody's figured it out by now, but it used to be a great way to find new product that wasn't really on the market yet. Those type of um, creators, the one where their product is their baby, you have to work a little bit harder. So those are the ones where you want to be more personal. I would change this to say I'm one of the owners, you know, and kind of talk about what you sell, kind of what you believe in, you know, if you're uh, artisanal or natural or organic. And you kind of got to convince them that you're going to take good care of their baby. These huge resellers don't get into how excited you are to find them and you've been selling on eBay and, you know, you bought your first zebra or Dymo printer. You know, they don't, they don't want to hear any of that. You know, they just want to, they want to think that you're going to be somebody that's going to help them make their quota. So just keep it short and sweet, spell out the information you need in there and then make it sound like, you know, that you've been, that you almost don't come across as bored, you know, bored, but interested in getting set up because it's just, they're just punching buttons. So, um, you can copy and paste this. Uh, you just basically touch on, you know, that you're a retailer. If you specialize, you can put that in there. You don't even have to put that in there if you don't want to. Uh, I always say potentially carrying your products just so it doesn't sound like that you're desperate for them. Um, and then the last two sentences are the important ones. Um, you ask for information on their terms and how to set up an account. So that provokes them to send you any forms or information. And then you touch on map, which I think is important because that lets them know that you know what map is and they're not going to have to worry about you adhering to it as much. You're not a new seller. And then you cover the restrictions. So it kind of puts the onus on them to tell you what the rules are going in up front. Um, Feel free to copy that, modify it, tweak it, do whatever. I use something similar uh, for the larger ones. And then one of the previous webinars, uh, we actually have an entire script uh, that you can tweak for your own use that talked about, you know, if, if they object to things, how you can answer it. I mean, it walks you through soup to nuts that basically I've built that over the years. Anytime I've had an objection, uh, I've answered it. And if they didn't like my answer, I worked on that answer until I got a good one. And that's what's in the document. So, um, I, I think that's gold because it basically represents two years of me battling to get wholesale accounts. Uh, but this simple one will get you through 90% of them probably. Um, setting up an account. Uh, here's some of the things you may run into and you definitely will run into. You may need to provide a bank or vendor reference. Um, don't get freaked out over that. It sounds scary and it actually is. It's actually fairly simple. Uh, and this goes back to the business account. I would go out and do that as soon as possible just so you're building a history, you know, and just start using that as your primary account. To get a bank reference, you just go into your branch and say, you know, I need a trade reference or bank reference. They will basically pull up your account and list the, sometimes the average balance or the low balance or the high balance or that type of thing. They'll list how long your account's been open and if you've had any NSFs or that type of thing. It's basically like a credit report for a business. So uh, hopefully this goes without um, needing to say it, but don't bounce checks on your business account. Don't overdraw it. Try to keep a little money in there. I mean, when I first started, I think my low balance was $87. You know, I mean, I wasn't really uh, killing it, but that was okay because I don't, I, no one seemed concerned with that. All they seemed concerned with was whether or not it bounced a check. For a vendor reference, go place an order with Uline. Uh, even if, you know, it's for a roll of tape or whatever and just pay the shipping. Everybody and their brother knows you line. They all get a thousand catalogs. So when you put that as a vendor reference, then that, I think that personally, I feel that does a few things that tells you that tells them that you're a player because all the big, a lot of the big companies use you line. And that tells you that, you know, you're doing a certain volume where you're not buying your labels off of eBay. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it just kind of projects a certain image. Uh, so pick a couple of vendor references. Um, 
you know, they need to be traditional vendors. So again, that's where Uline comes in handy. You could also do the same thing with bubble fast or any of the other ones. It's just, I think you'd have a lot more chance of someone recognizing the name Uline than some of the other ones. Um, you definitely will need to provide your sales tax certificate. So this is something you can't get around because as we mentioned before, you can't get a sales tax certificate unless you're a business and they can't sell to you unless you're a business. So that connects the dots. Um, they all have some type of form you have to fill out. Some of them they're online. Some of them they're a document they print out. Um, it's just basic, you know, billing address, shipping address. Someone will ask anticipated volume. Um, that's just so they know how excited to be. I usually, you know, estimate conservatively, but don't put a hundred bucks, you know, so put a range that you think you can conceivably move in the next year. Um, they'll ask about checking accounts. I'd say at least 50% of them ask personal or business. So again, that's where I just feel better checking business. They'll ask for phone number, fax number. Your grasshopper phone number is also a fax, so you can do it that way as well. Um, if you have to fax forms back, um, uh, going back to my old school comment, a lot of these companies are old school, so they like fax. So uh, don't buy a fax machine. Don't sweat that um, or don't, you know, uh, don't email it to them if they don't want you to. Just go to, I use Got Free Fax, and the, the link is in there. It's completely free. There's no advertising page on the front. You know, it, it it gets there fairly quick. You can buy credits. I think it's 10 cents a page or something like that if you want to get there faster. But it's completely free. All you do is upload the document or the PDF, uh, and away you go. Uh, so that's what's involved. Uh, some of them want to do a phone call. Uh, don't be worried about that. Um, it's just introducing you to your sales rep, or they want to do some more qualification. Uh, so the qualification is typically, you know, so where will you be selling this? Tell me about your customers. You know, and so you just kind of have to uh, just mentally get the mindset of, you know, what your customers are like. Pretend like Amazon is your actual store. You don't have to say, well, I wouldn't say they buy from me on Amazon, so I don't know them. I would say, you know, my typical customer is, you know, middle to upper class. Uh, they shop based on convenience and selection more than value sometimes. You know, just kind of uh, don't, don't lie, but just kind of portray what you feel that your average Amazon customer is on. And I think the average Amazon customer is – middle to upper class and looking for convenience and, you know, all those things. So it just rolls right off the tongue. Um, but don't disclose more information than you're asking for, you know, so don't say, uh, I just started, I don't know, or, you know, let me go ask someone else. I'm not sure. Or, you know, I just moved from eBay. You know, you just kind of want to be, it's almost like you're, uh, you're under arrest and <laughs> you're being asked questions. Don't lawyer up, but don't tell your whole life story. Um, Purchasing. So after you get your account set up and you go to purchase, it's very common for wholesalers to add a surcharge for using a credit card. Uh, and as I mentioned here, you think your margin's bad, theirs is even worse typically. Most of them run off of a 3 to 5% margin because, again, they're getting pallets in, they're shipping pallets out. I mean, it's just volume, basically. Um, so they may add a surcharge. You can do ACH with some of them. Uh, I wouldn't do wire transfer, especially right off the bat. Um, because you have kind of less coverage on wire transfer. Uh, but that's just something you need to build into your pricing model. Um, they may require a, and I meant to say wire transfer here, I said bank transfer, but some of them may require a wire transfer or ACH. Some of them just will not take credit cards. Um, those, I would kind of do the circle and sniff test because, again, you have less uh, protection there. So I would probably not initially jump on one of those. Um, but, you know, if it's an item that no one else is carrying or you think you got to go for it, then, you know, have at it. Um, they will either charge you shipping on your invoice or charge your shipping account directly. Uh, wholesalers and distributors do not do free shipping uh, as a matter of habit. Some of them may do it if you buy a certain amount, like one of the wholesalers we're going to show you at the end. I think if you order over $2,500, shipping is like a flat 250 or something. So... If you want to call that free shipping, then yeah, they get free shipping. But most of them are just passing it on, again, because their margins are bad. So um, one of the other things that you may need or want to have lined up is UPS account. Those are free to set up. But also don't expect any discounts on shipping. And since they're not doing free shipping, they're not shy about throwing stuff in more boxes than needed or just, you know, they kind of ship like Amazon does, basically, where they will throw a bag of jelly beans in a four-foot-wide box and stuff it full of air bubbles. You know, um, you're going to run into that. It's just part of the game. 
Um, but definitely factor shipping in into your pricing. Uh, and they will, most of them will give you an estimate before they ship it. Uh, some of them, they just ship it and don't care. Um, and then ask about their back order pre order policies. Uh, one of the wholesalers or distribu distributors we're going to show you later on, um, they are. They're really a pain in the butt to deal with, but they kind of own the market on some of the hot items. So their policy is like if they have a pre-order, they say pre-order ships in October of 2015, and they may post this in March. So you go out there and you order three or four cases. You won't know until they start shipping in October if you made that first PO or not. So you may be on the second PO, which may not ship for another six months. If you don't like that, then you can cancel it, but they'll charge you 25%. So you kind of have to make sure you understand that policy. Uh, this is another, and we'll touch on this later. This is a great time to talk to your sales rep and say, you know, hey, where are we at on your PO? Do you think I'll make the first one? Kind of what you feel, you know, feel it out because there's, uh, they have some pretty stringent rules. So you want to make sure that you read, um, uh, you know, the, the policies on the form they send you. Receiving. Um, don't do like I've done a couple times in the past where, you know, you're overwhelmed with listing and shipping. So an order uh, shipment comes in and you let it set for a week. Uh, if nothing else, open up the box, sniff it. If it's a chemical, shake it if it's breakable, just check and make sure there's no damages because you, you have a limited window to report them with most of them. Uh, a lot of them are seven days. So if something's damaged, you want to go ahead and, and make sure they know about it as soon as possible. Get in the habit of if the box is crushed or you suspect it might be damaged, snap a photograph of the box, preferably before you open it, but afterwards it's fine. Take a picture of the inside and then take a picture of the item if it's damaged. They will all give you a credit to replace it. You know, I've never been stiffed, but, you know, I'm sure they've been stiffed, so they're not just going to take your word on it. So you need to produce proof. Um, so do that within a day or two. Verify your order against the packing slip against what was actually received. And that sounds like a tongue twister, but here's the, here's the process. You go on your, their website and you place an order and you order 10 different items. You get packing slip uh, that shows up with six items. Uh, well, if you don't, you may not catch that or you may say, hey, they didn't ship something, but what may have happened is it may be back ordered. Some people, some companies don't list a back order. They just ship you what you have. And they bill you for what they ship you, and it doesn't show up on the packing slip. Some of them will list back orders. Some of them won't list it, but they'll ship it when it comes in, so you'll get another box and another charge later. So you kind of need to follow the entire trail to make sure what you should have got matches what you've ordered and matches what's in the box, so you can report shortages. Um, and then save that packing material in boxes. Most of the – well, I'm going to go ahead and say all the wholesalers and distributors I work with – they ship in new boxes. You know, they're not pulling old boxes out and stuffing it with newspaper. These are legitimate warehouse facilities. They're going to have either the craft paper or the air bubbles. Uh, they're going to have good solid boxes, a lot more U-line. I mean, they're pristine other than the damage getting there. So I rarely buy boxes because, you know, I'm always having those in stock and they always ship big boxes. So that's one little perk. You know, you're getting a free what $1.30 box with your big order. Uh, for each box. Ongoing business. This is probably the most important part of the process, I think, because my sales reps have really made or break uh, my success with some of the wholesalers. Um, your sales rep, and there's nothing against sales reps, this isn't demeaning, but more than likely they're just a poor working schmuck working a job that they probably don't love. They're like you used to be before you left your job, or like you may be if you're still at your job. You know, they're not out setting the world on fire. It's typically not their company, so they're just punching the clock. So they get crapped on just like your average waiter or waitress, average average employee. You know, there's customers that spend millions of dollars and push them around and, you know, jerky people. Uh, it goes a long way, you know, treating them with respect and kindness, bantering with them, joking with them, you know, uh, just kind of trying to build a rapport so that you go out of your way to be nice to them. Reason being, they have inside knowledge that won't be on their website and no one else will know about that will give you an advantage. So they know what's coming in, what's hot, what they have extra in the warehouse. I've had them, I had a very hot selling board game that Amazon couldn't even get that was selling for three times my costs, about $40 over retail. And for about a month and a half, I pretty much had the corner on the market because every time one would come in, 
my sales rep would hide it in her office for me and then call and ask if I wanted it and it would ship me all I wanted basically. And it was supposed to be limited of like two or three per person. I was getting 20 and 30 at a time because she liked me. We went to a conference. She met my wife. You know, we were kind of friendly with her and she took care of me. Uh, when I violated my uh, map policy with, actually it was with Poopery, they wanted to shut me down. But my sales rep, because I've been working with her and nice with her, went to bat called in a favor and not only got me off the ban list, but she got me on the list of approved resellers, um, which they have gone through and limited. And I'm on there with, I, I have no business being on there. Basically I'm on there with sellers that dwarf me, but because she went and called in a favor because I was nice to her, it put me in a good position. So until you're, you know, big banking, you know, 12 million, $15 million a year seller, like maybe Chad Rubin, he could probably call up and be rude to a wholesaler. If you're not doing 12 million a year, you better be nice. You know, don't take your frustrations out on them. Don't blame them if you pick the wrong pat product. Um, I know I'm harping on this, but this will make or break you because this is the best way to get ahead because you're buying with people that have way more capital than you. So you need to have some kind of angle to stay alive in there. Um, I flat out asked uh, my sales rep at one of the wholesalers and distributors we're going to show you later, hey, I saw on Amazon, what's the best ROI? And he sends me just tonight, I got a list of 12 items where he said, hey, check out what these are going for on Amazon. And he sent me the link to their product and what the sales rank and the price is on Amazon. So I don't even have to look them up. He, and these are new products. He sends it to me and says, hey, check these out. And I've never done anything for the man other than just be nice to him and chat with him. So that's the kind of thing you can get if you're, uh, if you're willing to just kind of be decent to them, you know? Um, so again, don't want to harp on that, but if you remember anything from this presentation, just remember that be nice to your sales rep. Um, and then the last, this is kind of in the same vein of, you know, giving your UPS driver a gift. Um, I send my top suppliers and by top, I mean the ones that have gone out of the way to be nice to me. I send them a gift each year. It's usually 20, 25 bucks. Um, the one year my distributor saved my bacon with poopery, I sent her about $150 worth of stuff because, you know, the revenue she saved me alone was worth a ton, but send them a little gift, you know, ask them for their address. Um, you know, a lot of them work from their home, send them to them, just something simple. If they mention they like candles, send them a candle. Uh, if they like a favorite restaurant, just send them something say, Hey, you know, you're one of my favorite, uh, suppliers, I appreciate you looking out for me, you know, something like that. That will pay off a hundredfold for you in the coming years. Um, and, you know, because there's there's really no better advantage than your sales rep emailing you and saying, hey, we just got these in, the, in today, they're not on the site, do you want them? And then, you know, all you got to do is reply yes, and you have them before all the other knuckleheads even see them on the website. So that's just a little tip um, to apply as you're doing this. Um, this is the, the bonus I was referring to. These are four uh, legitimate distributors slash wholesalers I personally ordered from. I personally got product that I've made money from, and I personally would recommend uh, once you do your homework. So, um, again, if you watch this from start to finish, there is not a single reason I can think of why you couldn't be receiving from any one of these wholesalers within a week or two. Um, and really, two weeks, only if you haven't done any of the stuff that I've listed. Um, EE Distribution. This one is a ginormous website. Um, I think the last SKU list I got from them was around 17,000 SKUs. They have Star Wars Episode 7. They have Nerf, Hasbro, Mattel, Lego. Uh, some of the big sellers, they're doing 10 million or more per year. They order from this, uh, from this distributor. So you're playing with the big boys when you're on there. So this is one of those cases where it makes sense to, um, you know, buddy up with your sales rep. This is also the website that has the pretty, um, uh, pretty tough um, cancellation policies. And Jennifer just posted she has an account with the distribution, great reps. Yeah, I agree. Uh, they will go out of their way to help you if you're nice to them. <laughs> they have stiff cancellation policies and they do pre-orders. So. Um, I've lost money several times on products. Uh, one of the most recent ones was, uh, it's kind of funny because it was a lot of money, but it just exemplifies it. Tomorrowland, that was the movie that came out back in, I don't know, July or August. Um, George Clooney, um, I think it's going to be a great movie. It didn't do that well. Um, I ordered um, some Tomorrowland items in March, back before the movie was even out. Uh, I was a little late getting on the PO. Apparently, I didn't realize that, but I placed an order. I got those in last week. 
So <laughs> obviously no one even knows what Tomorrowland is anymore. It was a dud and the people forgot about it. So I'm sitting on a pretty large quantity of Tomorrowland crap that no one even cares about anymore. I could have canceled it and lost 25%. Tomorrowland. That's that thing. What's his face one to? Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Todd. My wife is talking. Hello? Okay, I think we lost Todd. All right, yeah, so um, Tomorrow End, not, not a great movie. Um, always be... Uh, you still there? Are you there? Okay, I think everybody's back. I'll give everybody a chance to catch up to make sure. I'm not sure what went on there, but um, we'll wait and let everybody's screen refresh and make sure everybody's back on. Are you seeing the video, Sean? Okay, I'm getting the yes, you can hear me. Uh, if someone can see the slide on my screen again, if you could just post uh, yes chat or something. Like there. Okay, excellent. Okay, sorry about that. Um, but e-distribution, um, as I mentioned, uh, I picked up some clearance Doctor Who, um, got it for you know way under retail, and I'm going to easily double my money on that. So um, even though the margins are low, you keep your eye on these clearance sales and their periodic sales you can make money on. Uh, Burton & Burton, uh, they sell a ton of craft-oriented items. So every type of balloon, ribbon, basket, decor, all kinds of stuff is on there. Uh, I am not a creative person, so um, I, I didn't do much on there. Uh, I just bought what they had and sold some. But if you're the type that can make really cool crafty stuff, I mean, it's, it's just like a like I put it, it's bundling nirvana. And that's a great place to add something simple that's going to keep other sellers off your listing. So if there's a, you know, a stuffed Easter bunny, you can go in there and get some really cool looking baskets inexpensively, uh, some other items, make a bundle, and it's going to thwart anybody that's out there at retail stores, you know, trying to match your listing. Um, I've, talked, I've talked to a few sellers that go get items from Dollar Tree and then backfill with Burton and Burton so, items and create exclusive a website where you can go buy stuff from. that no one can uh, no one can touch um, glwholesale.com these are dollar store style items there's some gems if you can absorb the shipping so essentially their minimum order is $500 and they ship um, you know large quantities of items because most items are a buck somewhere around there but there's a lot of shampoos toothpaste and stuff that you can double or triple your money on which you know is two or three dollars but still but the thing is to ship you know 600 balls of shampoo you're looking at some pretty hefty freight charges that's the one that will reduce your shipping when you get over a grand or two grand but um you know so that's something to think about but if you're local and can pick up or you can do a group buy or something um, they have some really good items out there um, honestgreen.com they are a division of UNFI which is a large international food distributor um, so just about any of the major food items that, uh, that you can see on um, that you run to on Amazon or I'm sorry Walgreens, Walmart that type of thing uh, anything from the high end teas which I've done very well with on there to uh, you know lotions um, you know, you name it. There's close to 20,000 SKUs on there. Um, there's another good one uh, if you want to do wholesale. The margins are very slim on there. If you want to see the difference between the price you get for wholesale versus the price Amazon or a Walmart gets, then it will be apparent there because sometimes you'll find items cheaper at Walmart than you can buy them on Honest Green. Uh, and that's another good point. If you think you found a great wholesale tool uh, or Wholesale source, just plug that item into Ace Inspector or Amazon or just search Walmart and Target and just make sure that it's something that you can't get cheaper there or that they don't have available already there because, you know, 
I think we covered this before. Walmart, you're buying four cases and thinking that you're a big shot. They're buying 40 trailer loads. So, you know, it's totally different, um, totally different scenario. But again, this is, you know, your biggest advantage is you're nimble. Amazon's not nimble. Walmart's not nimble. You float like a butterfly and sting like a bee. You can bob in and out, get items that Amazon goes out of stock on and supplement when they're out of stock or find things they haven't found yet. You know, use that to your advantage. Um, also, and I'm not going to give away which ones or what to look for uh, so you can get used to it, but look at the homepage of each of these sites and scroll down to the bottom, look around on the sides, look for listen their show schedules, Look for them adding a bunch of keywords at the bottom so they get found by Google and take those keywords and run with them. You'll get some great ideas on how to find some more wholesalers there. Uh, so, again, uh, there's your $500 wholesale directory. Uh, some rest of one slide, some uh, great wholesalers. Again, I bought from these. I still buy from some of them. Uh, there are some products on there that you could definitely look at. Um, there was a picture, or I'm sorry, a um, question before we got dropped uh let's see uh i can't scroll up to it but i believe it was something along the lines of how do you get a list of upc codes that goes back to the be nice to your sales rep uh, most of the ones i've talked to um on the screen has them for download on their website uh, most of the other ones if you talk to them they'll kind of say we don't really have that or um, I to go to bed, huh? You know, I can't get you that, that type of thing. I just recently got a full list of all the EE uh, UPC codes um, just in the past month, and I've been a customer on there for over a year. That's one of those things you're just going to kind of have to work on your sales rep if it's not available. I think almost all of them uh, can get it, but uh, I'm not sure if, if uh, all of them are going to release it. Um, Sean, I can't see... Who that is talking? We can mute them. Um, let me see. No, not here. Maybe it's downstairs. Okay. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's something you, you just have to ask and um, uh, you know, see if they'll get it for you. If not, then you know, do what I did the first year on e distribution. I just uh, most of the lists have a UPC. I just browse, copy and paste the UPC. And go look it up. I mean, it's it's the hard work. It's tedious, but you know whether you're standing in the store scanning or doing it on the website, it's just got to be done. Uh, it's one of the natures of the of the beast, basically. Uh, so again, that slideshow will be available um, uh, on the um, in the mastermind groups after the presentation. Let me go ahead and pop out the Chrome, and we will actually do a basic uh, website right here. Um, let me share this out again. Uh, okay, and I'll wait for that to refresh. Um, if if somebody can see that, if you can just post, can see it or yes or hurry up on board. Okay, there's a yes. Um, this is Weebly. When you first sign in, I will go ahead and sign out just to show you the prices. Um, it may have dropped me already anyway. Um, and show you what's included with each of those just so you can see what we're talking about. Ah, shoot. Um, I may have to come back to that. Uh, let me show you my site so you can see what it looks like and what, how simple it is when I talk about how simple and straightforward it is. Uh, I do have my own domain, so it doesn't show up as a Weebly. I just have my logo up top, a home and contact page, I have a photo that I paid the royalty fee for. I have some very simple text, just talking about how long we've been selling, our approval rating, kind of what we like doing. And you know, if you're interested in working with us, contact us. I post some of the brands that I carry. Uh, they're available on Amazon. You are legally allowed to use that as long as you're selling on Amazon. Uh, so you can post that on there. P.O. Box number, that's it. As you can see, there's nothing flashy to it. There's no video. Uh, there's it's really just simple, straightforward. But this has gotten me every single wholesale I have so far without a complaint and some compliments. This is a Fiverr logo. I paid, I think I paid $15 for it because I wanted like three different choices. I want high resolution. So there's $15. This photo was $3 uh, and the rest of it was free. So you're looking at 20 bucks for this web page. Contact, it's just a basic 
first last email and whatever you want to say, click submit. Um, I actually had a uh, distributor contact me a couple weeks ago asking where they could send me a catalog because they want to work with us. So uh, it's really just that simple is all it needs to be. How I did that page was, let's go in here. Uh, when you go to Weebly, uh, and I'll figure out how to sign out at some point so I can show you what the prices are because it won't show me. Um, but you go into Weebly the first time you go in, and it looks like this where you're creating a new site. And they're just going to ask you, hey, what's your focus? Site, blog, or store? You don't want a store. They charge extra for that. And like I said, it's, it's not necessarily needed, and uh, it's a lot of work to get set up and maintain. You don't want a blog, obviously. You just want a basic site. So you click site. You get to pick a theme. Uh, I honestly do not remember what theme I went to. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I'm not convinced it, it really matters. I mean, uh, it's just basically the colors and the layout. So if you have a big, beautiful background image that you're going to use, that would probably work. Uh, if not, if you just want to do text, you could do that. So just to keep it simple, let me scroll back up and we will do, um, do a mainly text one just so it's going to look decent. Um, let's do journey. So we'll do journey. So you pick a template and that just gives you the basic layout. Uh, you can either, this is where you choose to either use a subdomain of Weebly. You can register your new domain right here, but as Sean mentioned, they will kind of hold it captive. So you're better off just registering it separately. Or if you already own your domain, you can connect it here and it will give you the information to do it. Since this, this is just a test, we'll just do it on Weebly and we'll just say, uh, I don't want to use anybody's name. Let's just say Mastermind Demo. So that's going to be our store name, Mastermind Demo. And then it says get started by dragging an element to your page. So, um, They've already got headlines. They've already got the basic layout when you do a when you do a layout. So that's the purpose of using the theme is it's already here. Um, so you really don't have to drag too many elements if you want to use that that specific uh, theme. You just go in and change it. So instead of this being my site, we'll just highlight this and we'll say Mastermind Demo Site. Right, and yes, you can change your theme later, and you can preview what it looks like later, so you can kind of see what each one would look like. Um, go ahead, add a headline. You can say, you know, you must do business with us, something along those lines. Again, description: we're awesome sellers. Call us now. And then you can have, a, if you want to have a button do something, you can have button text. If you don't want a button on there, um, you can just remove that or choose a theme without a button, basically. So after you get this set up, then you can say you want to add an image. Over here on your left are all your elements of a website, basically. There's basic title, text, image, gallery, slideshow, map, all that stuff. So we're going to put an image here. We just drag this image right there. And then it's going to add an image. So you just click and upload the image. Uh, let me just find something simple here. We'll go, I'll grab a poopery image because those are always fun to do. So it looks like that's wide. So let me find something I will just do with this. That'll work. It uploads the image. So there, right there on your web page is your image. And that can be your store image or whatever you want to do, but it just adds it right onto the page. It sizes it. You can resize it if you want to, uh, but by default, it does pretty well. Um, in this image, you can choose how it's aligned. If you want to do a light box, spacing, all that stuff. Each one of these elements you can click on, and it will give you options on, you know, how you can format it and such. Um, let me do this over here so I can see. Um, so you add that piece. Uh, if you want to do a contact form, you click on contact and this is where your contact form, you can have different, different information, different image. Your contact form is the element over here. So you just drag it over and say contact form and that will do a standard one. You can change these names. If you want to add a field, you can add, uh, where is it over here? There's a field over here. Oh, you could do. Address, 
you have them put their address in. If you say, no, that's stupid. I don't want that. You can just hit delete and take it back out. All this stuff is set up. So it prompts them, you know, requires a first name, requires a last name. You can make last name required or not required. Um, you can do a hover text, I call it, where it says, you know, um, put your last name here. And when they hover over it with their mouse, it will distra- display those instructions. Spacing, you know, all the same kind of elements are all here, all drag and drop. You don't have to learn any coding. Um, form options, this is where it emails to. That's my email address. Um, you can give them a confirmation when they send it. You know, if you, obviously you'll put your email address here, and that's where it will send when they fill in the contact form. About page, um, as you can see, I just use my home page as my about page. But if you want to do a different one, you can do that here. Um, if you want to show um, where you're located, you can drive a, grab a map uh, element. If you want to show a gallery of your products, you can show that here. Um, if you want to show, um, where is it? Um, there is a place where you can show, there we go, HD video. You can put a video on there if you want to. Um, if you want to put like multiple images like I did on the other page, you can say drag an image over here. And then you can do a divider. And then you can drag another image underneath it. You know, you can separate them that way. Um, you can, in this box, um, you can point to a URL for the images. So if you have it all the way on the website, you can post them there or you can just upload them. You can grab this bar and move it around. So if you want to move this image further up the page or down the page, it's just all drag and drop on the theme. Um, easy to do yourself um let me get to the preview uh you click on this window and it shows what your page will look like on the mobile you know everything needs to be mobile now basically mobile friendly um so that's a good thing to check um they will have like a weekly advertisement on the bottom if you do the free uh version uh but if you want to uh pay extra they will get rid of that for you uh, design is where you go in and you can change your theme. So um, to answer a previous question, um, say we hate this theme. It will maintain the elements that are already in that theme, but you may lose some formatting. Um, but say we hate that theme and we want to change it to uh, that. You just click on that theme. You can preview it and see what your actual website will look like with that theme. And then you can either choose it or cancel it. Um, you also do color s- selections, as you can see. You know, it's kind of fun to tinker with, basically. Um, but we can go ahead. We'll just pick this theme. And then it will do some updating. And presto, that's what your theme looks like now. So that's under design. Pages is where you would add uh, additional pages. Uh, so if you wanted a home about, contact, um, you know, gallery, whatever, you can do that there. Store, that's an optional feature they charge you for. You can actually have an e-commerce store here. I don't really recommend using them for the e-commerce store, but um, if if that's something you want to do, you're certainly welcome to check that out. Uh, Depending on what plan you choose, um, you can have SEO, which basically is search engine optimization. Um, Probably more stuff than we can get into here, but um, there's a ton of other things you can do. You can have members. um, You can add additional apps, a blog, that type of thing. Uh, Once you publish it, um, we'll go ahead and click this real quick. I just want to show you website. We'll say it's a business. Once you publish it, you can do previews um, of what the site looks like. So you can um, you can either see it in window, or you can just go ahead and pull it up in the browser tab. So we'll go to this browser tab, and I'll show you master mind demo. Weebly.com. And I hope I used two D's in. I can't remember. Yeah, there we go. So there you go. There's a website with the theme. Um, obviously, there's more work to be done, but we, we knocked it out in five or ten minutes. Uh, and the pricing, uh, which I'm determined to, if I can't find out how to get to that without, uh, and this, we'll post it later. Um, oh, here we go. Upgrade will show it. So the upgrade, the starter plan for three twenty nine dollars a month. It uh, gives you, you know, they all come with the same builder we saw. They all come with free hosting. Basically, hosting is your web pages need somewhere to run. They provide that for you. Unlimited pages, yada, 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 connect your domain if you buy your own domain name. 
basically everything except for the high definition video and audio players um, and SSL if you're going to do a store. Up to 10 products, et cetera. Uh, if you went with Pro, that's where you add, you know, you can get rid of the Weebly link. That's 663 a month. You can get your own fav icon. As you notice, my website had a little W, um, Weebly, which I don't care about. You can pay the extra or 1954 a month. Um, I've been using them for, like I said, a couple of years. I've been completely happy with them. They're very, um, speed's very responsive, no issues with them. So um, I know we went over, um, but I want to make sure I cover everything. Let me pull up uh, chat and see if we have any questions. Um, the last one I saw is about changing the theme. Um, other than that, does anybody have any issues or uh, anything that they're unsure about? Um, or don't think they can uh, they can do this on their own, uh, feel free to post it either now or post in the Facebook group and tag us. Uh, otherwise, this, the entire presentation and this video will be out there, so if you didn't get a chance to take notes, um, feel free to go back through it and you know pull up on your screen and just step through it one by one. Um, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Oh, um, so the one you were using was free, right? The one I was using is free, yes, because okay. I do not have a store. Right. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, yeah. The only reason. It, awesome. The only reason it showed because I chose upgrade, it showed this paid plan because I'm already on the free plan. Um, so that's the only reason um, that it didn't show that. Um, I'm not sure when I signed up, you could use your own domain name with the free plan. I, they may have changed that. That may be the only caveat, but still for three thirty a month, you know, that really it doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. all you're doing is putting it into their uh, name server. So, okay. you know, I wouldn't do personally. I wouldn't do that myself. I would just go to the domain and forward it there. So okay. If you don't like it, you can just or you know, you want something better down the road. You just yep. go into your own account and you forward it somewhere else, and you know nobody would really even know the difference. Okay, and I use GoDaddy. I just I think when I signed up, they would let you do theirs uh, as well, but uh, for free. But regardless, yeah, I use GoDaddy as well, and they do have a um, you know a little site builder. Uh, I think it's still free. Yes, um, I don't use it, but uh, uh, you know it makes it, it makes it all very easy right now. Um, Kate wanted to know if you have your own domain, you can move it later. Yeah, you can do that. And um, um, let's see, as far as, the, um, you know, in the future, we'll go over, uh, you know, what you do with those um, lists of SKUs once you get them. Um, yep, that's a good point. Things like scan power and, and all those other tools, um, which I, I use that a lot. And I believe the new... Um, Ace Inspector Pro, you can just put a list of SKUs in there as well, and it'll bring up um, you know that information. Yep. Have you tried that yet? Uh, I have not. I, I can't remember if it's ASINs or UPCs, but I do know they added that, but I will definitely check that out. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and we'll see everybody at the next webinar. Thanks a lot. Yep.